Hello, everybody. Welcome to Monroe Live. I'm Al Steyer, Vice President of Technology. Uh, today, we're going to look at the uh, BYD Shark Hybrid Battery Pack, which is sitting off here to my side. Um, what I'd like to do is I'm going to start with the cover because I found this to be rather interesting. You see it's got a couple of ports down here, but this is on top of the battery, which is the top side. And then when you look at this side, you can see all the channels. It's actually AC cooled. Um, I have seen a couple of AC cooled batteries in the past. It was uh, predominantly on BMW. Uh, but the interesting part is it's on the top and not the bottom. Everybody else cools from the bottom. Uh, you do get like the Tesla that does uh, the channels between the cells. But it's definitely a little, something a little different that we've, than what we typically see. So as you come over here, uh, they're using what's called the blade cell. Uh, they're long, thin cells, about a quarter inch, maybe a little more than a quarter, three eighths of an inch wide. Uh, and they just kind of run in series. So I've got a positive connection over here and I have a negative connection over here. And so the battery power, what it does is it runs down the length of the cell, the module, it comes across at the back and then it comes back down here to exit out. Inside this area is your BMS, your contactors. Uh, we haven't had opened it up, but I would imagine there's probably a fuse or some sort of pyro charge inside here as well. Um, on top of the batteries, you can see this grid. So what they're doing is, you know, with batteries, you got not only do they have to be cooled, but they also have to be heated. And what they've done is they put an electric grid on top of the batteries to heat them up. Oh, this there's another interesting that green sealing compound or adhesive you see uh, is all around the whole perimeter of the pack and even across the center. Um, actually, if you zoom in on this cover, the other interesting thing we found, which is very rather unusual, but you can see where the fasteners were and you can actually see they encapsulated the fastener around the edge of the fastener to prevent leakage. And they did that all the way around all the, the threaded fasteners on this. So the other thing that's kind of odd on this is they actually have a foam uh, pad adhered to the, pa the module, the pack itself all the way around. Uh, one of the other things you notice, there's a vent, there's two of them, one on this side, one on the other side. And then if we move to the front, I mentioned the AC. So what was nice is the cover has the ports in it and they just engage it, just press into this block right here. And this is your AC manifold. And then it looks like we have a couple of high voltage connections and probably a, uh, it looks like another one here for DC. All right, welcome back, day two here. Uh, you can see the shark battery packs upside down. Um, just kind of recap, yesterday we, uh, you know, we disconnected the uh, bus bars. We got the communication wires out of the way, so it was ready to pull out. Uh, we tried doing some wedging on it, trying to get it to move inside the battery pack. And as you can see, we were not successful. So today, uh, we know where the, where the battery sits inside. And what we did is I ended up scribing some lines down and we got a nice good old uh, skill saw here with a metal cutting blade. And we're hoping we can just follow the lines and when we get done, we'll cut through it and the battery pack will fall out the bottom or out the top. Welcome to day three of uh, Monroe Live and uh, the uh, BYD Shark battery pack teardown. What you see in my hand is uh, results of three days worth of work. This is the blade battery cell. Um, it's a lithium ion phosphate. Uh, there's basically uh, 114 of them in this module. Uh, between the two modules, 57 per, around 30 kilowatts, 365 volts DC, uh, 81 amp hours. Uh, it was a, a little bit challenging uh, just to get this out. Uh, it basically, it was glued down inside of here. They got some adhesive, so we basically had to pry down, but it was the last step. Before we could get to that step, we had to remove a whole bunch of uh, bus bars. So this is the connection between cells. And as you look down the length of this battery pack, you can see a number of them are still in here. Uh, they're basically laser welded to each of the batteries. So you go from the positive of one to the negative of the other, go, crosses over on the other side, comes back to connect them all in series down through. 
Uh, they do have this plastic plate on here, so it kind of covers over everything. So we had to remove that on each side of that. Uh, the plastic plate serves as a couple functions. One is it actually closes out the cells here, so you really can't touch it. So it's like an insulator. Uh, the, the second purpose of it is, I can get it out of the bag. This is what's called a BMS board. So this BMS board is attached on the ends down here, and there's a number of tabs that connected it to the battery cells. And what it's doing is it's monitoring each cell's voltages, and it's trying to balance it. So if you're trying to, if you got all the volts, all the cells are at three volts and one is at 2.9, it's going to try to discharge the rest of those cells to get them equal. So they always want to keep the cells as close as possible together. Uh, the, interesting, you know, a lot of people they'll take and have a wires running out to a BMS, but what they did is they just had tabs that went from one cell to the other. Um, to get from one side of the battery to the other, they took an interesting approach on that as well. So down the length of this side of the battery, they had this flex circuit. Um, it's not connected to anything, it's just uh, basically connecting from here to here. And what they did is they connected it from one side of here and what, and then over here, there's a little bar, a little tab here. That tab actually connects to the other side of the battery. So they're actually running the current back through the battery somehow. We haven't pulled the cell apart to see how it actually works, but a little bit different approach. Most people will have flex circuit on both sides, interconnect, and they've actually done it through the battery itself. Something that we've never seen. So something that caught our eyes. I can tell you, I hate this glue. This stuff is hard and it does not come off. Uh, so to get the batteries out, I think we talked about it yesterday. So it's literally glued in. The walls of the, the housing come up through here. You have no access to anything. So we literally had to cut the plate out at the bottom of the battery box. And the battery box is over here and you can see it's now empty. And you can see we had to get pretty close to the walls. Uh, this one, we did, this one was a little better. This one had a little bit sticking out, but we only have about that much room between the battery and where we're cutting. So we had like a couple millimeters for a margin of error and we uh, successfully removed them without uh, arcing and shortening anything out. Other than that, I think that kind of sums up what we've done over the last couple of days. So anyways, I'd like to thank everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, feel free to subscribe to our site and uh, looking forward to the next one.